Hello and welcome to the very first episode of On Deck with the Muskrats. I'm Casey Williams, play-by-play -play broadcaster for the Muskrats, and I'll be your host. This is a brand new format for us on LRPA TV, and we're very excited to be able to bring you even more news, information, and fun stuff from the team. Over the next couple of months, we will preview the season coming up with two shows, and then it's opening night for the Muskrats on June 7th. We'll come at you at a much more regular basis here on LRPA TV. This first episode, we will look back at the 2011 season and what was so successful for the Laconia Muskrats. We'll also get a chance to talk to some of the sponsors and players that made it memorable at Robbie Mills Field. But first, leading off. Most recently, the Muskrats announcing that Sal's Pizza will be a new sponsor for the 2012 season. Sal's Pizza, located in Belmont, New Hampshire, will serve their jumbo slices at Robbie Mills Field this summer. The Muskrats are also excited to announce that they have been approved for a liquor license and they will sell beer at the home games all summer long. The Muskrats are very excited to offer this just another concession option for their great fans. And the most recent Muskrat news, the team has signed Matt Aldrich. Aldrich is a pitcher at Darton College, a JUCO college in Division I. He leads the nation as of right now in strikeouts through March, 78 punchouts in just 11 games. The Muskrats have led the league the past two seasons in strikeouts, and they're hoping Matt can help them do it for a third straight season. What a year it was in 2011. The Muskrats finished as the Eastern Division champions, losing out in the NECBL Finals to the Keene Swamp Bats. Chris Costantino was named the league MVP, throwing the fifth no-hitter in league history. He helped lead the Muskrats to their first ever playoff series win, and then on to the championship appearance. Even before putting up big numbers in 2011 for Laconia, Chris Costantino was drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals in the 43rd round of the MLB draft last June. And we're lucky enough now to be joined by Chris Costantino. He is on the phone with us from West Palm Beach, Florida, the site of the St. Louis Cardinals minor league spring training camp. Chris, thank you for joining us. I understand that you just had your tonsils taken out, so thank you for toughing that out and being on the phone with us. We'd like to know how your first spring training is going as a professional ball player. Um, yeah, I actually uh, had a little step back. I had some shoulder inflammation um, coming into spring training, and with the tonsils coming out, um, I've been you know off the field for about a week and a half. So uh, I'm probably gonna start um, assuming. Probably in Batavia, which is a low-A short season um, club, because I was in Johnson City last year, so I expect to move up the level. But um, I'm in extended spring training right now, so I won't report probably to a camp or out of this camp until um, short season starts, which is I think the end of May, and just be able to you know be blessed to play baseball for a living with all these great players and. I mean, a great organization who just happened to win a World Series last year. And uh, just to be able to, you know, put that uniform on and play with that tradition, it's just a great, you know, great feeling. When we look back to your 2011 summer here in Laconia, you were the Rick Leagy MVP of the league, you threw a no-hitter, and you helped lead the team to its first ever championship appearance. Chris, what are some of your favorite memories from 2011? It certainly was, and the good news for the Muskrats this summer is they have a great core group of players returning with the likes of Dylan Kelly, Regan Flaherty, Bijan Rodmacher, and Coach Matt Allison returns as well. So if you knew someone coming into the NECBL, would you recommend playing for Laconia? Baseball and the competition is great, and 
you know, Noah and yourself and, and Nikki do a great job putting stuff up. And, uh, I mean, even my host family, I have to do a shout out to them a lot. They, uh, you know, they really made my summer because, you know, sometimes when you're, when you're able to go home and relax and, you know, have people who actually care about you, not your family take you in, you know, it's a lot easier to play stress free and they totally did that for me. Absolutely, we certainly do appreciate our host families here in Laconia. Now, Chris, you threw a no-hitter. You were the league MVP. 80 strikeouts last summer, just nine away from the all-time mark. To me, you are Mr. Muskrat playing two summers for Laconia. You know, it's just an honor. Um, you know, I strive myself every day. You know, work hard and, you know, hard work pays off. And, you know, stats are just numbers, but, I mean, that's half the game of baseball, so to be able to put up good stats is, you know, it's just what you play for. Um, I don't know. Uh, somebody will eventually take that name from me, but uh, it's good to have right now. Has Noah said anything to you about putting up a statue in your honor? <laughs> uh, uh, no, but, um, you know, if it ever does happen, I'd be happy to be there for the uh, unveiling. The least we can do for you is retire your jersey number, but I know we were never quite sure which jersey number you would wear each night. Yeah, that, uh, I wasn't too good at keeping uh, track of my jersey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, last year's team made it to the championship series. Do you think this year's squad can even improve on that and take the next step? It's good. It's tough. I mean, we were, to, to play with kids, you know, for a summer, and, you know, to be as close as we all were, you know, on and off the field. I mean, I can't say that there's many, you know, teams out there that that have that relationship. And, I mean, everybody was rooting for everybody. And, you know, it wasn't just the talent we had. It was just we were so close to it. And, you know, if somebody couldn't get it done, you know, but we knew that the next person was going to. We were just had each other's back. So, I mean, if, if they're able to, then, you know, just they have to be you know, a very close-knit group and, you know, be rooting each other on. So, I mean, I wish them the best. Chris, we certainly wish you well, and we thank you for taking out the time to join us on On Deck with the Muskrats. The best of luck to you in your spring training and all year long in the Cardinals system. Thank you very much. Good talking to you. It should be another tremendous season at Robbie Mills Field here in 2012, and we're lucky enough now to be joined by the man that makes it all possible, Noah Crane, the general manager of the Laconia Muskrats. Noah, thanks for being here. Glad to do it, Casey. We have a lot to look forward to for 2012. Quickly give us a sense of what we can expect from the team and from the fan experience. And 2012 is going to be a great season for us. So I'm very excited. I think we have the carryover effect from the playoff run we had. I definitely saw a different energy at the park, our last home game and then those three playoff games. I felt that there was a really an ownership change in the city and throughout the community that they really started to buy into the fact that the Muskrats are their team. They came out in droves for those playoff games, and I think that energy helped to propel us forward in the championship games. But I think that's going to carry over a significant amount, at least that's my hope, that people yes. will have a long memory going from August until we start up again in June. Right. So I think on the baseball side of things, there's a lot to be excited for as far as our roster is concerned. We've got a number of people returning from last year's team, and then we have a, a whole crop of new players as well who are extremely talented. I think on paper, this is our best roster. It's always a question of who's going to show up come June. We always lose right. a couple of guys to the draft right. or to summer school or to injuries. But at least at this point in the season, this is by far our best roster that we've had. From the fan experience standpoint, we've got some new additions to the park in terms of our concession sales, in terms of the overall experience that fans are going to have. So we're continuing to try and recreate, in, in a sense, an entertainment level for our fans that is something new each time they come. We never want people to show up at a game and think, oh, they can been doing this for the last two years, it's getting right. boring. We want to continue to innovate and create memories for our fans here in the Lakes region. Well, it sounds like it'll be a great season again, the Muskrats last season in the championship series in the NECBL, and with an even better, perhaps, roster this year, could be poised to take that next step to a championship.
Let's go back and look at some of the history of this team. Before being the Muskrats in Laconia, they were a member of the NECBL in Manchester, Connecticut as the Silkworms. How did you get involved in acquiring the franchise and bringing them to Laconia? Well, I've had a knowledge of the NECBL for quite some time. I, I spent time as a coach before I got into the business side of baseball, and I sent a lot of my players to this league. So I've got a familiarity with the league. I know how how it's been running for the past, uh, we've been in existence since 93, so a significant amount of time. So I had a knowledge about it, and I approached a gentleman in Manchester who was selling the team, and we were fortunate enough to have the winning bid to be able to buy the team. And all along, we knew we were going to relocate. And we settled on Laconia almost immediately. Uh, both my father and myself, who are the owners of the club, have ties to the Lakes region. We're both, uh, I'm a New Hampshire native. Uh, I'll, I'll rib him a little bit that he's from New Jersey. <laughs> oh. um, so we had a tie to the Lakes region, and so that helped us to think about where do we want to go with this club. And one of the prerequisites, at least in my mind, for a successful franchise is you need to be far enough away from the reach of Major League or Minor League Baseball. So having a location that's far enough away from a professional option is key. I think we have that here with the yeah. Fisher Cats and the Silkworms being just far enough to where that's not something you're going to do routinely. Right. So we wanted to be able to provide that local baseball option for people. Also the population. There's a strong population here that's year-round, year and then you have the addition of all the folks who are coming up in the summertime that just add to the population base that we can draw from. And lastly was the field itself. We drove up to take a look at the facility, and it's, it's really beautiful. It's a one-of-a-kind facility that the city has here, and we're fortunate to be playing at that Robbie Mills Park. It's, it's a wonderful setting for baseball, particularly in the summertime, and it's worked extremely well for us and what we're trying to do. Well, the city is certainly glad that you brought the Muskrats to town. The team has grown in both its two seasons so far. So the NECBL, second to the Cape League, in many opinions, the quality of baseball. Uh, what is your sense of dealing with the league as a GM? I think it, it, we jockey a little bit with some of the other leagues. There are, I would say there are about 30 summer collegiate leagues across the country. So it's really exploded as sort of a business model. The NECBL, like I said, has been around since 93. So as a league, we've positioned ourselves well to attract top-tier talent. The Cape Cod League has been doing this for nearly 100 years. Yes. They really get the best of the best in college baseball. Mm -hmm. And we feel that we're going after just a notch below, in terms of talent level, what the Cape has. And generally what you'll see is a lot of our guys, if they played with us in their freshman year, they'll go on to play at the Cape the next year. Okay. Yep. Uh, so we're a hair below, but uh, in terms of overall stature, it's really the New England Collegiate Baseball League and the Northwoods League, which comprises sort of Minnesota and Wisconsin as the two preeminent leagues second to the Cape Cod League. You mentioned when you brought the team up to Laconia, the facility you really liked the way it looked, a majestic sense at the field at Robbie Mills. What kind of preparations and readying did you need to do to that field to make it playable in the NECBL? There weren't a whole lot, and it was more in terms of the outfield fencing. When we got there, the outfield fence was only 340 yeah. feet. And for college baseball players, even with wooden bats, that uh, is rather short. So we came in and pushed the fences back to uh, 370. Still a hitter's park. Our, yes. our hitters like it. Our fans have seen there have been a lot of home runs hit <laughs> at our field. So that from that standpoint, it's exciting. But we had to push the fences back a little bit. We've got a roster of 30 players. We've got three coaches. We've got trainers. So we needed bigger dugouts as well. Mm -hmm. And so we expanded both of the dugouts by about 10 feet to accommodate the size of our rosters. We put up a PA system out through all of the, the light posts so that we can have the ability to broadcast our games out to our fans, being able to hear them during the games. We built a press box on top of the existing concession stand. Right. What we do, as you obviously know, is we broadcast the games both over, over the Internet. Right. So we film them, and there's an audio portion as well. So we need the press box to be able to house that operation and be able to have a good camera angle behind home plate. So those were the additions that we made to the park in order to have it specific for college summer league baseball. And it's been spectacular for college baseball play. You've got great relationships with coaches, players, and some certain schools. When you look at the roster year to year, you see some of the same schools coming back, SMC, Vanderbilt. You've got four returning players this year who are really core group of guys. Coach Matt Allison returns as well. What can you say about the relationships you've built through this team? 
Sure, I think it's nice to have the continuity. You know, with summer baseball, the roster is always going to change, generally. We'll bring back one, two, maybe sometimes as many as four as we have this year. Mm -hmm. But generally, you're going to get a new crop of kids each summer. So at least to have the fans to have a connection to a specific school and be able to have that tie to say, oh, we have another Vanderbilt player, and we had you know, Regan Flaherty last year from Vanderbilt, and I remember he was a good player and a good young man. So I think that's nice for our fans to be able to have that connection. For me, it works out well, and what you see from our roster is we've got a lot of Southern schools represented. Yes. And that comes back to my roots as a coach. I have a lot of friends who are still coaching in that area, so we rely heavily on South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee to be able to recruit our players. So you see a lot of guys coming up from that area of the country because that's a lot of my friends who I'm relying on <laughs> for recommendations for players. You touched on it, your history as a coach, and you played as well at UMass Amherst. You're the GM, the man of mystery. What can you tell us about your career before this in baseball? Uh, yeah, I had a chance to play collegiately, which was great. Uh, I went to college trying to play baseball. And right-handers who throw in the upper 80s are, that are pretty straight are a dime a dozen. So <laughs> that's why I'm no longer playing baseball. Uh, but I had a great, a great time at UMass to being able to play. I enjoy the, the camaraderie of the players. obviously love the game of baseball, but it's more about being with – being with other guys and competing that I really enjoyed. Didn't get to play a whole lot. Uh, I walked <laughs> too many people. Uh, it's funny, I, I always wondered why I didn't get a chance to pitch more in college, but then when I became a coach and my own pitchers started walking people and I'm pulling my hair out, I can understand <laughs> why my former coach didn't pitch me a whole lot. <laughs> I can relate to that as well. Well, Noah, we thank you for all you've done bringing the Muskrats to Laconia, and it's certainly been a very successful endeavor. You've made a very smooth transition into GM. We'll get you back in the show a little bit later to talk about the 2011 season, some of your highlights, but thank you again for being here. Thank you. The Muskrats' second season in Laconia was almost the height of all heights, and it definitely exceeded all expectations. The Eastern Division Champs season started with great news from the 2011 MLB Draft. Nine one-time Muskrat players were selected in that draft, and in all, eight former Muskrats have been accepted to play professionally including Jason Rogers of 2010 with the Brewers and Jarrett Miller of 2011 with the Braves. On June 29, 2011, the NECBL Select Team played against Team USA at Fenway Park, a very nice showcase for the league. Despite having just arrived on the Laconia roster, first baseman Chad Wallach and right-handed pitcher Damian Magnifico represented the Muskrats in the exhibition game. Team NECBL upset Team USA 3-2. Despite just a 5-10 record through June, the Muskrats began to heat up in July. In a span of one week, the team produced three walk-off wins at Robbie Mills Field. On July 7th, LB Danzler hit a home run in the bottom of the 10th inning to end a six-hour, rain-plagued marathon against the New Bedford Bay Sox. July 10th, John Zisniewski drove in the game-winning run in the bottom of the ninth to cap a furious comeback by the Muskrats. The team scored all of its seven runs in the final two innings to beat Sanford 7-6. And Johnny Ziz will be back for the Muskrats again this summer. And July 11th, the Commodore Connection, Vanderbilt teammates Regan Flaherty and Drew Fan team up to give the Muskrats an 8-7 victory and finish off one very wild week. On July 17, 2011, who could forget it? You heard from him earlier in the show, Chris Costantino throwing the NECBL's fifth ever no-hit game. And he did it against the eventual champion Keen Swamp Bats. The Muskrats won 7-0. Also at the park that night, the Red Sox very own Wally the Green Monster stopped by for Mascot Madness Night. In related news, Wally has been invited back for every home game since as a good luck charm, and we are still waiting to see him. On July 27, 2011, six Muskrats were selected to the 18th annual NECBL All-Star Game, the second most selections for any team. The Muskrats finished their regular season with a mark of 18 and 24, just good enough for the fourth and final playoff spot in the East. It was the second straight time Laconia has edged out New Bedford on the final day to make the postseason. The team entered the playoffs while coping with numerous key losses. At least seven Muskrats were called away from the team due to injuries or school commitments in the final week. And yet, with only one available player on the bench, Laconia did the unthinkable, 
sweeping first place Newport in the first round of the playoffs. It was the franchise's first playoff series win and the only time in 12 years that Newport has not advanced. Talk about dominance. And then on August 7th, the Muskrats became the Eastern Division champions by completing a second round sweep of the Sanford Mainers. The offensive heroes in this series, your four returning players for 2012, Kelly, Flaherty, Zizniewski, and Bijan Rodmacher. This core group of guys battled together and great chemistry took them from fourth place to first place in just one week. August 10th, 2011, the season came to an end, just short of the ultimate goal. New Hampshire neighbor Keen Swamp Bats were crowned the NECBL champions, defeating the Muskrats. Chris Costantino would later be named the Rick Leagy Most Valuable Player. But that was not it for the Muskrats in 2011. Probably the biggest headlines for the team came with an off-season contract offer to ousted Red Sox manager Terry Francona. Yo, Terry, the Laconia Muskrats, New England Collegiate Baseball League, faxed your agent a job offer to manage their team. They haven't heard back from you. Several benefits in the offer. You get a parking spot, 25% off at a burrito restaurant. Who doesn't love burritos? And 25 tokens at an area arcade. Do they have skee-ball? Hey, let's check in on play-by-play. -play. <laughs> More reaction now on the 2011 Muskrats season. The man that reached out to Terry Francona, the general manager Noah Crane, is back with us. No, you might not have gotten Terry's attention with that blast, but you got a lot of media attention. How did that play out for you, extending a contract offer to Terry Francona? It was something that came to me. It was, I was sitting at my computer, and I saw that he had been fired or let go or whatever terminology they want to use there. And I'm thinking, yeah, why don't we offer him a job? We were looking for a manager at the time. Why don't we try to get Terry Francona to come up to Laconia to coach us? So I just kind of jokingly put together a little contract offer faxed it over to his agent and then put it on the internet and with the power of the internet it started to snowball for us. <laughs> I expected to get a chuckle out of it from our Facebook fans and the folks who right. frequent our website and I got it to a couple of the baseball publications that sure no one's ever heard of and all of a sudden I clicked back on and Nesson.com had picked it up yeah. and then from there ESPN.com had picked it up and it just continued to snowball to where it made it onto Sports Center with a little clip. It got a chance to do some interviews here locally on Channel 9, and then there was a Fox affiliate down in Boston. Did some interview radio TV interviews, yep. and it really took off more than I had anticipated. So something that started small that I thought was funny and that our fan base would get a kick out of really garnered us some national, some national media and to be able to talk about the muskrats on a bigger level than just more local. It really did. It, you, do, you throw the fifth ever no-hitter in the league and you get a couple mumblings, extend a contract offer to Terry Francona, and we were on a national level this summer. So that was a good move by you. We just recapped the 2011 season, the accomplishments that this team had. This was a, a group of good players, but struggled with some injuries and some team members that left. The team made it to the championship series. What can you take away from a very impressive 2011? I think we were top heavy in terms of our talent, and that certainly helped. Having a player like Chris Costantino to be able to lead you both offensively and defensively is hard to replace. And then we also had Justin Wiley, who was a starter for the All-Star game as a pitcher. But having those top two guys in your rotation really help you to win games. Some of our better players, unfortunately, either got hurt or had to go home for whatever reason. So it's a testament to, one, Matt Allison, our manager, and the job that he did yes. keeping guys focused, as well as to the players who were remaining. In summer league, it's hard to create that culture of wanting to win. These young men are, are frankly tired. They've played a long season in the spring. They've played in the fall as well. Some of them have even played the previous summer. So there's not a lot of off time for them. True. So when it gets to be late July and August, they want to go home for the most part. And I understand that. Yeah. I would too. They're starting to get tired. But it speaks to the character of the guys who remained with us, that they still wanted to win, they mm -hmm. still wanted to compete, and they wanted to try for that championship. And we made it to the championship game almost with spare parts. Yeah. And the funny thing that we joke about a lot is we started the championship game playing four catchers. We had a catcher <laughs> catching, we had a catcher playing first base, we had a catcher at second base, and then a catcher at DH. That's not generally a recipe for success, <laughs> but those were the guys who were left and they still wanted to win, and that was great for us to see. And the Muskrats will enter 2012 as the defending Eastern Division champions. This team has seen great growth in its first two years. What more can you expect in 2012? I think for us it's about visibility. 
our first year, uh, we sort of anticipated the if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. And to, to some extent, that did happen. We had about 6,500 fans in year one, uh, lower than we had wanted, but still we knew that there was growth ahead. With this year, we got over 10,000 fans in our second year. So we saw a pretty big jump from year one to year two. We anticipate a similar jump this year, one with the carryover from the playoffs, from the added visibility that we have in yep. terms of our marketing plans, being able to be on TV here, I think <laughs> is going to help us uh, create new fans. And then lastly, the added elements that we're putting into the park with the pavilion, with the beer sales and the new, the different concession stand sales items. I think that's going to help us move forward and attract more people as well. Well, there certainly is a buzz for the 2012 season. Noah Crane, general manager of the Muskrats, thank you for all that you do for this team. Thank you. Tickets for the 2012 season are available through the Muskrats website. They're also packaged through the New Hampshire Humane Society. Check out nhhumanesociety.org for your chance to buy tickets to the 2012 season and help out animals in need. This portion of the program we like to dedicate to our many dedicated sponsors that do so much for our organization. And today, the spot is filled by Burrito Me, the Mexican food restaurant located at 9 Veteran Square in the old train station in Laconia, and with a new location in Plymouth. Burrito Me is an MLB level sponsor for us, and we are joined today by co owner and founder Ruben Bassett. Ruben, thank you for joining us today on our first show. Thanks, Casey. It's great to be here. Now, Burrito Me has just opened a brand new location in Plymouth, New Hampshire. What can you tell us about that store? Yeah, we did. Um, it's been going really well. Uh, we knew from the start of opening in Laconia that we wanted a second uh, location. Um, we had our eye on Plymouth, um, and when the, uh, the spot that we were looking at became available, we, uh, we had to jump on it. Um, so far, it's been going really well up there. Um, yeah, it's a great addition to the Burrito Me family. Well, we're excited to see your business grow, along with the Muskrats as well. This is your second year in operation. How did you get started with the Muskrats and with Noah? Well, with the, uh, the Muskrats and uh, Burrito Me, we're, we're s similar ages, if you will. Um, right. And Noah came in um, soon after we started. Um, and we just started chatting, and he was like, you know, we're, we're new, you're new, let's, let's see if we can develop a partnership that works for both of us. And, uh, I think we, we have done that, and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Burritos and baseball going together very well for the Muskrats and Burrito Me. What benefits do you see on the business side of things? Uh, the Muskrat partnership for us is, is a really good one. Um, First of all, I mean, we love baseball, um, but also we, we think that our food goes really well with, with active people. Um, you know, it's, it's good for all types, but it definitely benefits uh, people who have active lifestyles. Mm. Um, so as far as, like, the players and the management of the, of the muskrats, we think it's, it's a good fit. It's the type of people that are going to be drawn. Um, and so the benefits have, have been really good just as far as giving them some exposure and giving us exposure at their games. Um, they've done some, some special events for us up there, uh, some burrito eating contests yes. and things like that yeah. um, that have worked really well. Um, and we've also uh, started selling food up there, um, which has also gone really well. It's been a big hit, um, and we're hoping to continue that in the future. You're definitely my favorite sponsor from the burritos I get to have up in the press box, and I'm happy to have you guys on board. And that's a good point you bring up about active lifestyles. There aren't too many food chains that allow healthy style food for people with active life. Yeah, and that's that's something that was important for us. I mean, we we had never owned restaurants before. Um, Burrito Me was our first one, and it was really important to us to, to just have food that, that we liked eating, um, and we thought that there was a demand for. So everything that we make is, you know, fresh in-house. We, we do it all there. All our salsas are made um, in-house. and. Um, the beans and rice start dry in the morning, things like that. And it, it was really important to us to have, you know, obviously food serves a, a utilitarian purpose of you got to eat, but at the same time we wanted people to be able to enjoy it um, and to not feel bad after eating it. Right. So um, that's kind of what, what our philosophy is, is we just like good food and we want to provide that for someone else. And it, it uh, happens to be that we found it in the Mexican vein and, and it seemed to seems to work really well for us. And, uh, so, yeah. Well, I can attest to the quality of the food. I had a burrito right before this tape today, a chicken burrito at Burrito Me. This is your uh, floor to pitch on. One last chance to get your business name out there. Anything you want to say to customers? No, just uh, if you haven't tried us out, then uh, please do so. Um, and, yeah, our food speaks for itself. And um, we're really looking forward to this year with the Muskrats and hoping they can make another good playoff run and hopefully go Absolutely. all the way. Um, so, yeah, we're really looking forward to it and excited about it. So. 
Ruben Bassett, the co-owner of Burrito Me, which is located at 9 Veterans Square in Laconia, the old train station, and a brand new location now in Plymouth as well. Ruben, thanks for being here. Thanks, Casey. Fans, be on the lookout for the Muskrats mailbox, a section we will post to our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash Laconia Muskrats. It's a place where you can post comments and questions to be read here on On Deck with the Muskrats. You can follow us on Twitter. We are at Laconia Muskrats. Also visit our website, LaconiaMuskrats.com. So there you have it, our very first episode of On Deck with the Muskrats, recapping the 2011 season, a season that saw the Muskrats make it to the NECBL championship game. So many great things to talk about from 2011, and I know 2012 could be just as special. Check your local listings all throughout April to catch the show here on LRPA TV. We will be back in May with a new episode previewing the 2012 season. Our thanks to Noah Crane, Denise Bouchane, Ben Miller, and the crew here at LRPA TV. For the rest of our crew, Casey Williams signing off. Thank you for joining us on the first episode of On Deck with the Muskrats. Check your local listings, and we will see you next time.